Hi, it's uh, Michael Polarski, and today we're going to talk about hyssop, Hyssopus officinalis. It's a famous shrub from the Mediterranean, a mother, another Mediterranean sub shrub. In other words, it's adapted to Mediterranean climates. It's quite, it's relatively drought tolerant. And we have a bell here at our, at next to our farm where people like to ring. Okay, so this hyssop, I think is just one of the most electric, I don't know, it's almost like an electric blue or an electric color to me. Um, and this one is uh, a little bit past the perfect timing for uh, for drying, but it's still perfectly adequate. Lots of flowers. Some of it's already been flowering for a while. So this is this is still a great time. Lots of good leaf. And so the thing about um, hyssop uh, that's famous is the color, and it's an excellent bee plant. Bees really like blue um, for some reason. So this is a favorite of theirs. I don't see anything working on it today, but a lot of times you'll see a lot of bees working the hyssop. And it's a wonderful tea. It's good for soothing the lungs. Great for in the colds and flu season. Uh, so anytime your you know, your lungs are feeling like they need some extra help, this is good. But I I like to take it just because of the flavor. So go ahead and buy it just, or not buy it or grow it, just and make tea just for the flavor. It's also a site nervine. It'll make you feel a little better. So it. It uh, tastes good makes, and, and is a good healing plant. You can look it up to find out lots more information. So for harvesting this, the trick is to harvest above the, uh, you know, this is all pretty much this year's growing here, there, but it did have a framework. It's a sub shrub. So in the winter, you can see here, there's some woodier stuff. This is, it was, uh, but this is, I'm cutting the new growth, but relatively low because I want income. So I want to get a decent, and when you get to the side here, you have to do a bowl cut. And so you're not giving it a flat all the way across because the way they grow, you're flat across the top, but then you cut at an angle, that bowl cut. And so, you know, do that, a little bit more one here. The goal is to cut off every flowering stalk on the clump so that it all goes back to the same place in terms of its flowering and this will re-sprout and we'll get another good cutting. I don't know if we get two or maybe three cuttings here um, but uh, a hotter, drier, a longer growing season you, you can get additional cuttings. So it's a multiple cutting plant, but every time you have to cut a little bit higher than what you cut so that you, you're all, you're leaving. And there's, there's a lot of new growth ready to take off here. So at any rate, it's, it's a really easy herb to grow. You start it from seed indoors, then transplant to a four inch pot and then put it outside. It's usually a long-term perennial, but there was a whole row here and last winter we actually lost most of the plants. So we have some new ones that went in somewhere else. But this is, this is a bit third year. So you can see this is a nice robust perennial. I would call it a short term perennial. It does tend to die out after um, three, four, five years, a lot of times. And so it's, you just have to plan on replacing it periodically and always want to have some hyssop around for tea okay mediterranean subshrub hyssopus officinalis